Welcome to a video on common drain amplifier designs or voltage followers. Right, so first we're going to look at the component purposes, some design parameters and specifications, and then some examples and simulations. Right. The source resistor is responsible for a stable bias point and can have influence on the output swing for the common drain configuration. The gate resistor is responsible for the bias point and it influences your input impedance since you need to choose your input impedance um, from this and the gate resistor or resistors are the only components responsible for your input impedance for the MOSFET. So this is one of the better qualities of a MOSFET um, is that you get to choose your input impedance and it can be extremely large. Okay, the two capacitors is just for DC blocking or decoupling and the other resistors is to load your amplifier. Right, so you can design for a specific load. Um, typically, the common drain is designed for a minimum load in mind. Your source resistor um, will provide the bias current, and there is two methods to choose your source resistor. We will get to that in the examples you always try to have vs equal to id um, rs and equal to your vds okay so there is no id rd in the common drain amplifier everything is around the source resistor right then we always try to maximize the input impedance and remember that the voltage gain should be roughly one volt per volt um, and the current gain is your AV value or your loaded gain multiplied by your input impedance divided by your load resistance. So if you having control over your input impedance your current gain is extremely large for a common drain amplifier. It can be anything you want it to be. It's not as dependent like what you will have of a common collector amplifier or a BJT based um, voltage follower. So looking at our common drain as a summary you should remember that there is zero current flowing in here so rgg is responsible for your input impedance and on the output impedance side you are seeing one over gm in parallel with rss so the maximum gain is typically one volt per volt and the loaded gain is the load resistance or the um, loaded output resistance or load prime over R load prime plus the output impedance of the amplifier. So if R load tends to be um, R load prime tends to be R load and output impedance tends to be one over the transconductance it is R load over R load plus one over GM is your loaded gain and for GV you just need to add the voltage division on the input side. Right, so example one, we have a common drain amplifier which is loaded with a one kilo ohm resistor and we have VDD over is as 12 volts a transconductance of 100 milliamperes per volt squared and a threshold voltage of 1.5 volts. Okay, the input and output should be 
four volts. So our peak input and output. So this is what we are going to design for. Then we should design a signal resistor um, so that the amplifier can handle eight volts at the input. So if I read this right, R6 should be equal to RG1 and RG2 right here. Um, design for uh, input impedance of 300 kilo ohms. And then we should do some analysis. Now, typically for these single rail applications, you choose RS to be half the value of the load resistor. Okay, and then your amplifier will be able to, to drive this load um, without too many issues. Right, looking at the small signal, looking into the amplifier, we see one over GM. Looking in from this side, we see RG1 parallel to RG2. So design equations wise, we have a specific input impedance to cater for, and we have a gate voltage. So with these two, we will be designing our two gate resistors. VDS is ID, RS is VDD over 2. That is what we will be designing for. Okay, so our load as 1 kilo ohm, half of that is 500 ohms. Choose your RS value to be 470 ohms. Then you always design with a specific load in mind. So we will be using our load prime and that is 320 ohms. So a source resistor in parallel with a load resistor. Then you can take this with the peak output voltage that you want. This load of resistance right here and that will give you your design drain current. So 4 volts divided by 320 is 12.5 milliamps. This gives us our transconductance, 50 milliamperes per volt. And if we take 1 over GM and our loaded gain right, uh, our loaded output right here, our load prime over 1 over GM plus our load prime gives us 0.941 voltage gain. That's fairly close to 1. Okay, if you chose these two to be the same value, this will drop drastically. Okay, but to complete our design, we have our drain current. With our drain current, we can find our gate source voltage, and that is 2 volts. Adding that to our voltage at the source we get 7.875 volts so we should be designing our input bias with 7.875 volts and we are designing 3 or 4 300 kilo ohms okay so if we solve these two equations simultaneously we will get our gate resistors at 820 kilo ohms and 470 kilo ohms right so if we analyze this a bit calculate our input impedance that is very close to 300 kilo ohms our current gain with this input impedance and the load is 281 amps per amps so that is a lot of current gain um, our GV is V out over V6, so we should be getting 4 over 8, 0.5, that's the final part of the design. So that should be at minus 6 dBs. So calculating for GV, we have our AV value, Z in over Z in plus R sig. 
and we get our signal resistor to be 270 kilo ohms. So if we want to insert 8 volt peak and get out a 4 volt peak um, value, 270k signal resistor. Right, so let's have a look at our simulation. So I took the liberty of measuring our drain current that is 12 milliampere. Our drain source voltage is at 6.36 volts. And I'm inserting 8 volt peak signal here. If we measure what's going into the amplifier, that is just a little bit above 4 volts. And what's coming out of the amplifier is 4 volts peak. Okay, so our amplifier is achieving what we are designing for. So we are driving a 1 kilo ohm resistor with an 8 volt peak signal, and our amplifier is actually doing a 4 volts in, 4 volts all out, roughly. So our um, AV0, that is very close to 1 volt per volt um, gain. AV.94 in the calculations, that was, I think, point, point 0.941 or something. Um, yeah, point 0.941. So very close to what we are designing. And then finally, we should be at minus six decibels. So 0 0.9, 0 0.494 is very close to minus six dBs. So I think this amplifier um, specifications has been achieved. On to the second example. Right, our second example is a dual rail application. And it's loaded with 250 ohm load, um, 10 volt rails. We should be designing for maximum swing. Again, a signal of 8 volts should be handled. Input impedance of 100 kilo ohms. Let's hop to how we would design this. So, with a dual rail, small signal first sorry my bad um, RG will be your input impedance so purely the choice of RG will be the input impedance here 1 over GM parallel with RS would be your output impedance um, R load prime is RS parallel to R load here and AV as in the previous problems, but the DC kind of differs. So VDD over two for our um, output. So VDS is ID RS. VSS minus VGS over ID should be our RS value. So RS here is purely to choose the, the current. And then finally, how to get our VGS value when we calculate that our ID is assume saturation. So for the design part, the best is to typically choose your source resistor to be the same as your load resistor or have it less. Okay, so... If RS is 250, the closest E12 would be 220 ohms. That gives us a loaded resistance here of 117 ohms. V out peak is VDD over 2 is 5 volts. So we are designing for a drain current of 42.7 milliampere. So 5 divided by 117. That gives us a transconductance of 92.4 milliamps. And if we calculate our loaded 
gain right here it is 0.915 volts per volts right input impedance z in is r sig so if we wanted 100 kilo ohm input impedance we just choose our gate resistor as 100k so using the r sig that we have and the z in that we want we get 0.457 volts per volts So with this, we have a current gain of 366 amps per amps. All in the choice of the input impedance. Um, although current gain makes more sense with the BJTs. Um, in any case, so we have RSIG as 100 kilo ohm or gate as 100 kilo ohm and a source resistor of 220 ohms okay so mostly picking rs is the important point in a dual common source amplifier the rest is actually just pure analysis from there on forward okay if you wanted maximum voltage transfer into this amplifier you could have just chosen rg as one mega ohm since our signal is 100 kilo ohms like that and you will achieve maximum voltage transfer so let's check out this amplifier in a simulation right so here's our amplifier took the liberty of calculating some of our values beforehand and we get a drain current of 54.8 milliamps 12.33 volts um, over our VDS Right, so input 8, input into the amplifier is 4 volts, going to the load is a little bit less than 4 volts right there. Okay, 3.5, so a bit higher than the previous one, if you want to improve this amplifier in general, you can increase the gain, uh, sorry, increase the gate resistor. And that is basically all that you can do around here. Choose these two to be equivalent. And that's it. Um, see what happens if we increase this to 10. Our amplifier will start to go into saturation, uh, sorry, into triode region right there so it can't handle exactly the amount that we put in because we need to remember that our MOSFET is voltage biased so if we try to push it too far we will start to change our VDS voltage and we will drive our amplifier into triode region so yeah This amplifier is working as intended so let's look at our final example right our final example uses a current source right here so when designing with current sources this is a class a amplifier right so Common drain using a current source is a class A amplifier right there. So we should design to drive a load of 50 ohms. Um, VDD VSS of 10 volts, 100 mA 
amperes per volt squared transconductance threshold of 1.5. So first, we should calculate and choose an appropriate current source. Then we should design for maximum swing. Um, pick a R signal so that we can handle a 10 volt input. Design 100 kilo ohm input impedance. So yeah, for a current source, it's easy. There is no RS value, right? So Zn is RG, VDS is IDRS, not really applicable here. And our maximum or peak output is typically VDD over two. Okay, so V out peak, VDD over 2 is 5 volts. Load resistor is 100 ohms. So V out peak over R load is 50 milliampere. So the source, current source that you should be picking or designing is for 50 milliampere. Right, GM is 100 milliampere per volt. Note that this is the same as the transconductance of our MOSFET. Right, R load over 1 over GM plus R load is 0 0.909 volts per volts. There should be a negative there. Um, sorry about that, I think I neglected it while typing. And the current gain of this is extremely high. So I said it makes more sense when dealing with BJT amplifiers to calculate the current gain. Now, GV is V out over VS, so we should handle a 10 volt, output a 5 volt, that is 0.5 volts per volt gain. That means again that from this 0.909, we should choose a signal resistor and that is about 82 kilo ohms in this. So that is our design. Signal resistor of 82 Ks, input resistor of 100 Ks, um, source of 50 milliampere. Okay, let's check our simulation. Right, so if we simulate this and I first need to do the transient, we will see that this transistor is biased with 50 milliamps exactly. Okay, so using a current source is the best thing you can do for a configuration like this. Now, the drop across this transistor will typically be the VDD plus the VGS required here. And the VGS, when we are working with, um, with a MOSFET and it's perfectly biased like this, is 2.5 volts. Right, you can go and calculate it. So it's the 10 plus the 2.5 right here to the 2.5 volt difference. Okay, so on our amplifier, if we have a 10 volt input, that should be dropped not exactly half because the gain here is a bit um, smaller than one. So that is what, 5.5-ish going in and on the output, we have plus minus five volts out. Right, so this amplifier is achieving with by using a current source almost exactly what we want. And that's it for a class A amplifier. There's nothing more to say. So thank you for watching. See you again in the next video.